Hi, I'm Larry and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing an acrylic painting on a gallery stretched canvas. Now if you buy the canvases at the store, they're usually ready to go. This has already got gesso on it. If you turn it over, if it's a stretched canvas, you'll see that the back of it is kind of a tan color. That's, that's the natural color of the, the canvas. And when they're made at the factory, they already gesso them. So you don't need to do anything else to them except paint on them. I sometimes will take and tone, tone the canvas, but today I'm just going to work on the canvas just as it came from the store. Uh, we're going to be doing a this is a, a photograph I took at my sister's. She lives in Tucson. And these little guys wait on the fence for their breakfast every morning. So we're going to be doing this. It's kind of monochromatic, but there is a little bit of color in there. Doesn't mean that you just put out one or two colors. Put out all your colors because I will probably use them all. And I also am going to talk a little bit about values. Values, what a value is, is the lightness or darkness of something. Like this background, a lot of you will get this wrong. I know that for a fact. The background is a lot darker than you think it is. Having something like this, this is called a value scale. It's one that I made. You can also find them online, like I found this one online, and I printed it out, and it has holes in it so that I can lay it over my, my reference material and see how light or dark something is. You can also find, find on a color wheel, they have this, I kind of prefer this one because you could, it's a little more easy to see than, than that is. So, you know, they're available, learn to use it. But what you want to do when you have a, a value scale and you're trying to, to figure out what the value is, it's lightness or darkness, you put it over the thing. Like, I'm first thing we're going to do is this background. You put it over the thing in kind of a general area, and then you squint. And when that hole disappears, when you squint, that's the value. So this, this has a value here. And then if I go over like into this area, which is a little bit darker, and squint, it's, it's there. So a lot of this, this background is going to be in this very dark section. But if I turn it around and look at my birds and do the same thing with this and squint, and we're, we're down here. So we went from this dark area here down to this, this light area down in here. That's value. Uh, there's an old saying that, that says that value paints the picture, but color gets all the credit. And that's true. Don't let yourself be fooled by the color. Now, if you want to paint along with me, or try to paint this on your own, you can go to my blog spot and it'll have a link to the page where you will find this reference photo plus a drawing that I've done. And on the drawing you'll see a kind of a light grid and you can put that grid on a piece of paper or on your canvas and then just draw what you see in each square. Don't worry about it if, it, if it's a bird or not. Just like look at the shapes that are in there and if you get all the shapes right then the birds will be there at the end. So I'm going to start first by doing a background. Notice that there isn't a single thing on this canvas right now. A lot of you want to just jump right in and try to get this all drawn on. Well you're just going to have to paint over it anyway. That way by painting what's furthest away first and working forward, then you don't end up with a bunch of halos around your, your subjects. So we're going to paint the background first. When that's done, then we're going to put on our drawing and paint the birds after that. So I'm going to take a quick break here, reset my camera, and I will be right back. Thank you for watching.
Okay, I've reset reset that. A um, couple things. I've put put my uh, reference photo in a, a one of those clear page protector things, and I've got a, a clip on the top, and then I'm going to hang it right above where I'm painting so that I can look at this a lot while I'm painting. This is my reference. Also, if you're wanting to paint along, if you go to the blog spot and look in the sidebar, you'll see that I have an equipment list to let you know what I'm using. And those are the only things that I, I use when I'm doing, a, a, whether I'm in class or here on, on video. Um, so that you know what what colors I'm using and if you need to have paint on your own uh, that'll give you a place to start it's not absolutely necessary you can use what you have use the brushes you have but if you don't have anything that's kind of a basic list of colors and equipment so right now what I want to do is I'm looking at this this background. I'm not going to put in all of this well you can't see it unless I bring it down here. Um, there's a lot of of tree branches and other things back here uh, in in this that I'm not necessarily going to put in. I may suggest it but I'm not going to put it in in any detail like it looks there. That'll that'll kind of put it out of focus and it'll bring more of the focus in on the the birds. First thing I want to do, this is my my water. It has a very fine mist. I don't think you can see that, but it has a very fine mist. Just going to lightly mist my my canvas there. And then I'm going to come up, I'm going to do what's called brush mixing. This is a number 10 flat bristle brush. And it's the ones with the stiff, the stiff bristles. But I'm going to pick up a, a bunch of color. I've got blue. I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna. Pick up a little bit of hooker's green. All on this same, same brush. And I'm going to kind of start up here. And I'm just going to... This is called scumbling, where you just kind of scumble the color in, pick up some more burnt sienna, maybe a little burnt umber. This is why I tell you, put all, all your colors, because you don't know what what you're going to have. I may even pick up a little bit of, of gesso and throw in there. Uh, gesso I use instead of white. Uh, because it's a little bit more opaque. It'll give a little more body to my paint, but it also changes the value, the lightness or darkness of it. It's going to kind of come across. I think I may have wet my canvas a little bit too much. Because it's, when, when you can kind of see the canvas underneath it, then, um, You've, you've kind of got too much water in there, but that's okay. I can always go back over this. This is, you know, nothing is set in stone. Nothing is, is finalized. Nobody dies. Tell that to my students all the time. Nobody dies. Picking up burnt sienna, green, a little burnt umber, ultramarine blue, kind of make the corners a little darker. There's a little bit of gesso that ended up on there. But I'm just going to come in and just, I, I, I want kind of a jumbled mess back here because that's kind of what her backyard looks like most of the time. It's really kind of cool. I like, like going over there and, and walking around. This is Hooker's Green. Now green can be a little bit hard to work with. Um, think of it as a challenge. Add touches of, of orange or burnt sienna to it. That will kind of tame it down. I just threw a little orange in there. 
If you want to soften a color, you add some form of its of its complement. And the basic colors are, or the primary colors are blue, yellow, and and red. So you look across the color wheel and see what's opposite, and that's its complement. So the complement to green is red, and vice versa. Complement to blue is orange. Complement to yellow is purple or lavender. Now I know that this is going to be down behind the fence for the most part, but I want to get it down far enough so that I know that my fence is going to cover it. You know, some of those things you may want to commit to memory, like, like the primary colors and the complementary colors. Um, if you're a beginning student and you're thinking, oh, I can't do that, Lose that word. Lose the word can't because you've already told yourself you're not able to do it. So why are you even bothering? So lose that word. Think of it as a challenge. If you've never done this before, or if it's been decades since you've touched a brush or maybe the last time you ever really truly painted was high school or, or grade school. Um, You've got a long way to go. We don't absorb this through osmosis just because you've seen a lot of paintings in your lifetime. It doesn't mean that you have absorbed that all that knowledge. This comes from practice. Um, I'm going to take some yellow and some sap green, loosely mix it on my my brush here and on the canvas. I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just going to suggest some of those things that I see in the background and just kind of lightly go over them just so that they're kind of there. They're not really, I, I don't want them to be a feature. I just want them to suggest And just I'm just skimming over this. I just want to lightly skim come down pick up some some burnt sienna and mix it in with the green and then just come in and, and suggest suggest uh, something coming up out of tree limb but then just lightly skim over it and, and knock it down. This just adds a little bit of, maybe it's, it's a tree, maybe there's something back there. A lot of this is not going to show. But this is, this is just our background. Make it a little bit darker over here. Just throw some blue in. But like I was saying, if, if you're new to this, you're not really painting. You're thinking too much. And until you can just pick up a brush and talk and paint at the same time, trust me, I've learned a lot since I've become a teacher. But if, I, I, I'm painting. I can kind of prioritize and keep painting, especially doing this, and not worry about it, whereas you would be going, oh my god, what did she say? What colors were, was that? You know, oh, how did she do that? That's not painting, that's thinking. And if you're new, that's what you're doing. So, right now, uh, right now I'm just kind of cleaning off my brush. because there'll be um, fence in front of that. But that's my background. 
That's all I'm going to do for this. So right now what I have to do is I have to let it dry and then when I come back I'll probably have the the sketch on but I'll, I'll tell you how I did did that. So it takes it takes acrylics about 20 minutes or so to dry completely. Um, especially in weather like this it, it will dry pretty fast if it if it's cold and if it's damp it may take longer I will test it just come up and, and touch touch the back with the back of my hand see if it's dry but uh, I'll be right back you won't notice a thing all right the painting the underpainting that I did for the background is dry this is my pattern. I'm working, this is a 16 by 20 canvas. Now when you're, when you're making up a design, you want to make sure that the design fills the area. So if you were to print this out on like a single sheet of, of uh, computer paper, the largest you would want to do it would be an 11 by 14. Uh, even that would be a little bit small. It, it's more for like a, a, a eight by ten. So this um, pattern that I have here, I use a pattern maker that I can put my design into and make it as big as I need it to be. Uh, this is like a, a, a easy puzzle. It printed out in four sheets and I just kind of trimmed off the some of the margins and put it all together and if I want to make this the size of a wall I could and it would just print it out in in single single uh, eight and a half by eleven sheets and it gives you some overlap again if you go to the blog spot and look down in the um, sidebar you'll see uh, there's razor poster and poster eight that I have listed there I'm sure there's a lot more um, uh, programs out there. Uh, poster 8 is for PC and Razor Poster is for Macs, but um, it, it does a, a good job. And this way you don't have to draw so big. I know a lot, a lot of times it's hard to draw big, but if you want to draw, you'll notice that I've got lines on here. I, I've put a simple grid on here did it into thirds. And as I said before, just draw what you see in each square. Don't worry about the rest of it. Just draw what is in each square. And if at the end you have birds sitting on a fence, then you did it right. Um, I do encourage everyone to draw whenever possible. But if you're a beginner and you're afraid to draw, um, you know, I've done most of the work for you. I've got the reference photo. I've done the drawing. You just need to get it onto your canvas now. So after I did that, what I did, and I started out with white chalk and then realized you probably weren't going to be able to see that. I covered all of the lines with chalk. And you can do this with charcoal, but the charcoal won't show up real well on a dark background. So I, this is just a light blue chalk. Could have done it with just white chalk like you would get for a blackboard. Um, and just went over all the lines. Then I put it on there and I, I just used the handle of a brush and went over all my lines. And then so that you could see it, I came back over with a a white chalk pencil. I'll set that aside now so that you could see my drawing. So that's all I did. It's, it's sort of like I call it poor man's uh, tracing paper when you put the chalk on the back. But here you've got the design. I also want to point out something. I, I was talking so much the last time I forgot to mention you know I was talking about values and I wanted to make sure that I got the the background dark enough. Well, here's my my scale, and I want it to be between here and here. My background. Now, if you squint, that hole disappears. You know, come over here, and 
it, 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 it falls within those three. So I, I did pretty good, even though I was talking to you the whole time. So now what I want to do, now that I've got my, my drawing on, and some of you are going to have to get used to the idea that that drawing is going to go away at times. You can always put put it back on. It's you know it's not gonna hurt it if you if you put it back on. Uh, I've I had to reload my palette. Make sure you've got out all of your paint and that you put enough out. Don't put like. Um, the amount that you would put on your toothbrush. That's not going to help you put out a, a good inch or two inches worth of, of paint on there because if you run out, I, I have done this myself many times, you cannot mix the primary colors. You know, and so you need to make sure that you have all of your paints out so that if you need them, they're there because you won't stop and put them, put them out if they aren't. Um, I'm going to start with the fence and I'll, then I'll work, work my way up to the birds. I don't know how far I'll get on this segment, but I want to get some of the underpainting started. Uh, I have a, a, a techniques and tips on, on painting uh, fences, so if you want, want to, to look at that first before you get started on the fence, you go out there and, and look at it. It's, it's on this um, YouTube channel. So let me get started. I'm going to pick up some orange. I'm going to pick up, I want to come down, bring this down. I'm, I'm going to be doing kind of the underpainting for this. And you know, it's got some orange, it's got some red, there's, there's some lighter colors, maybe some yellow and, and white. So I'll just pick this up and I'm just going to kind of scumble this on there. I think I'll pick up a little bit more burnt sienna and burnt umber and just now this is one of the few times that I'll tell you to just kind of follow the the way the wood grows your your brush strokes are very important Pick up a little bit of white, little orange, little burnt sienna. And I, I started here just because it's in the middle of the, the painting. No particular reason whatsoever. A little more white. Streak that in there. A little bit of red. Now I'm going to pick up some blue and, and burnt umber and just kind of suggest some of this darkness here. I'll, I'll do some more later. But this is just underpainting. This is just getting it started. Slightly skim over that to calm it down a little bit. Pick up a little bit of white, mix in with that here on the, the edge. It's a little bit more of a, a gray color. I'm still using this number 10 flat bristle brush. This is just underpainting. This will change as we go along. Picking up some more burnt sienna, a little more orange, some white, and just painting this in it. And it doesn't have to match. Uh, the wood will age differently in different places. Different types of wood age differently. Uh, it gets really hot in the summer here and really cold in the winter. She's had snow in her backyard. It's dry. This wood gets a real nice patina on it. It looks really kind of neat. 
it doesn't have to be exactly as you see it. I'm just mixing up some more of that dark just to kind of streak it in there. Underpainting. Now I'm going to go, this is all kind of the same thing here. So I'm, I'm going to take and take a little break and, and finish doing that and come back and maybe do one more quick little segment so that I can break this at a, a good spot. So when you come back, I will have done the same thing through all of all of the rest of this wood and hopefully we'll get get the birds uh, based in today. Go right over his little feet. You can always put them put them back in. So give me a, a second here and I'll be right back and I'll make some magic happen. I've got the fence all painted across. I've, I've zoomed in a little bit because I'm going to be working with the the birds here in a second. But I want you to notice that I just painted right over where their tails and their feet are going to go. I can come back in and add those back in. Just take my, this is a just a chalk pencil, like a pastel pencil, and, and just come back in and add that right back in. It doesn't hurt anything. You know, I'm I'm just going to worry with the tails right now because those I, I do want to put in in this next bit, but I'm not going to worry too much about the feet. But that's why we we paint what's furthest away or underneath first and then work work forward because we can paint right over acrylics. Uh, like If you're used to oils, you would have to scrape it out and, and then paint it or paint around it or something. With acrylics, you just paint on top of it. You, you make something you don't like, you just paint right over it. That's, that's the beauty of, of working with acrylics. Uh, this is just regular acrylics, so it dries pretty fast. If you're working with open acrylics, those are um, more like oils and they take a little longer to dry. But right now what I want to do is I want to underpaint these birds. I've switched now. This is a number four flat bristle brush. I like to put my underpainting in with the bristle brush. It's I can scrub with it and do a lot of things with it. I can't do with like a sable brush. Um, but again, this is all still underpainting. What I'm going to be doing now is underpainting. I'm going to take my um, burnt sienna and a little blue and some gesso. And I'm just mixing up a, a, a color. Now, if you want to, to test a color, have a, I've got dabble boards here and that looks like about the right color for the the wing. I was just checking it with with what I have. Add just a little more blue and a little more maybe the burnt umber would be a better choice. And the white, you want it to be a little bit darker than the final the final version. You need some place to go with this. A little more, a little more blue, a little more. Now, when you're painting fur, feathers, well, practically anything, you, you want to follow the direction of the growth. So these feathers, they, they come in here. There's some flight feathers that are right in there. I'm going to make them just a little bit darker, a little more umber, a little more blue. I'll do detail work later. 
mixing color is probably the the most tedious part. That, that's a little better. But I'm I'm looking. I've got the right above me up here. I've got the picture, my reference picture, and I'm I'm looking at that before I put my, my brush to the canvas. The tail is right there. It, it goes behind the, the fence post. Now it gets a little bit lighter. Bring this down here. Right in here, I'm working on this bird. It's a little bit lighter, a little more brown. So I'm going to Add a little bit of gesso to that and a little touch of burnt sienna. I don't want it to be the lightest color. I just want it a little bit lighter. And now these feathers are a little bit different. They, they come from a different part of the body, so they're just a little bit different. And they, they kind of come down this way, and, and you can pull up or pull down. Fur, you want to see where it is on the body of the, the animal. And follow that the way that it grows. Up here, the, the feathers are coming this way, coming down the bird. Pull in, make the edge a little uneven. This was, I think I took this in the winter time. So it, in the mornings it can get pretty cold down in Tucson. And so the birds will sit there all fluffed up. And that's what these birds are doing. They're just kind of all, all fluffy. Just the wings. Now, on the body, it gets a little bit lighter. So a little touch of orange in there. Mixing color is probably the thing that will stump most of you. It's, it's what you spend most of your time on. And I, I can't say that it's ever going to get easier because it looks fine on your palette and then you, you come up and put it on your canvas and it, it just doesn't look right. So I just mixed a little bit of um, burnt sienna and blue in that because this goes under the bird. so. This will be a little bit darker. I'll, I'll add some more as I go. A little more orange to that, a little touch of white. Now I am, I'm kind of dabbing this. I'm using the side of my brush and I'm dabbing this. So that I can create texture and create those those feathers. And I'm working around the bird. He's a rounded bird, so I'm thinking about that as I'm I'm putting these little dabs in. Like I said, this is not the finished product. This is just the underpainting. Going to add a little more brown to this. Now each of these birds is painted pretty much the same way. Adding a little more burnt sienna, a little touch of orange. Gets kind of orangey around their head. Not going to worry with with the beaks or anything right now. This is underpainting. Detail's going to come later. 
But notice how I changed the direction of my brush stroke. Throw a little bit of that in there. I got that on my brush. I'll start this one. Same thing. This one's kind of sleeping over here. But I'm just following the shape of the head with my brush strokes. following the direction of the wing feathers. Picked up a little bit, add a little more white, a little more blue and, and burnt umber, and go back to this color here. Maybe a little more of that. Don't want to get it real light. I mean, it, it, it's going to need to get lighter. But this is underpainting. Now, if I'll finish the birds up, and the next time, on the next video, I will have all the birds painted in. So if you're following me and you want to, want to follow along, remember you can go to the blog spot and get the picture and the, the design. There's also a uh, email address there if you have questions or want to send me an email you can use that. But I'm going to end it here. So just remember to stay safe, call your family, your friends, but most of all, just keep painting. And I hope someday to see you in class again real soon. Thank you for watching.